Hello everybody, I'm Jason Cormier. I'm one of the co-founders of Room 214, a digital marketing and social media agency. And with me today is Michael Qualick, who is the Director of Strategic Insights for Room 214. Uh, we're here today to talk about video and uh, what we're calling the Fast Forward Video Strategy Series. Uh, there's going to be some great resources here for you, uh, templates, articles, uh, and three more videos to follow. Uh, definitely take the time right now just to head over to room214.co slash fast forward. That's room214.co slash fast forward. Uh, sign up so that you get access to the series that will follow along with the resources via email straight to your inbox. Uh, so to get us started, uh, we're going to Talk a little bit about video today. Yep. I've got some quick questions to uh, fire your way. Um, why does approaching video content strategically even matter? Yeah, well, I think if we start by thinking about some uh, stats that HubSpot has put out recently from a survey, um, over half of marketers say that video is the most valuable asset uh, when it comes to ROI. And brands who use video say they grow revenue 49% faster than those that don't. So we think about how much impact video can really have. Uh, that's a great place to think about, okay, how do we do this right? Uh, and you want to really start with intention. So you want to think about um, who you're making the video for, what the purpose is, and um, think about it really as a long-term asset. Because you can, you can look at it for awareness, for lead generation, even for reducing customer support costs. So there's a lot of um, different ways video can be a really valuable asset, but you want to be very specific with that intention. Well, and I appreciate that you level set that. I mean, I feel like as marketers for the last two, three years, we've been inundated with data, uh, with statistics, and it's all about you know video this and video that, and it's the future. And we agree, uh, yet we, few, we, we see so few people uh, doing it well. Yeah. Um, citing HubSpot again, I know their two, 2017 state of inbound um, reference that video is still the main disruptor in marketing these days. And we've seen other research. Uh, Wise Owl uh, says 63% of businesses are using video. Mm. Um, so to think that they're not doing it strategically, I, why is that not happening? Because it's harder to do it that way. I think uh, a lot of times we've heard brands say, we want, we want to make lots of videos and we want them now. And um, that's one way to do it, but I think the brands that go down that route often find that they don't get a lot of value out of those assets that they create. So we say, let's pause and figure out a strategy behind how we're gonna do this. Uh, that's gonna take a little more time, but it means that the quality of the videos that you're producing is much higher, and you're, connect, you're gonna connect with the people who um, really care about what you're trying to uh, communicate. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's say I'm a marketing leader, I'm an executive, uh, I, I've listened to the stats that you've shared with us, I mm -hmm. buy it, I want to invest in video. Yeah. Um, how can I be confident that my investment is going to actually create an impact for my business? Well, the thing that we really uh, focus on here is grounding our work in the persona. So understanding everything we can about the customer, their needs, their behaviors, uh, their desires, even looking at what those things, how those things change uh, throughout the buyer's journey, you can create video assets that address uh, different personas at different stages and get really granular with it. Or maybe you take a, a slightly different approach where you look at it from an awareness standpoint. Um, either way, having that grounding specifically in the persona, we've found is uh, creates a lot of impact. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, when you talk about personas and, and buyer's journey, and some of this is marketing 101, a, a very, for example, basic example of a buyer's journey is you're in a stage of awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, you move to consideration, and then maybe you're in a decision stage. And so what I'm hearing is you're talking about creating videos that address certain buyers, mm -hmm. personas, in each of those stages. Uh, and what about uh, channel strategy, you know, mm -hmm. different marketing channels and content strategy overall. Yeah, I think that's the great thing about video is that it doesn't have to be just this one 60 second clip that you create. Uh, it can be broken out potentially into different pieces that you would share on social media. You might create blog posts that uh, relate to content in the video. You might have a landing page that has more details. Um, so there's, it should be sort of an ecosystem of assets that are created around the video itself to really, you know, again, leverage um, the investment that you're making in creating 
this this larger asset. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're still learning so much about uh, what the benefits of that investment mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. from customer service, um, even SEO benefits. You know, we're seeing that uh, videos certainly extend the time on site, uh, mm -hmm. which improves SEO. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it seems like a long list of benefits. Speaking yeah. of benefits, how do we know uh, from a measuring perspective what's what's working? What are we measuring? Yeah, I think you need to answer that question before you make the video. Uh, you have to figure out, you know, are you trying to raise awareness? Maybe you then you are uh, looking at view counts, uh, reach, etc. Um, but if you're trying to generate leads, you might be looking at how many email addresses you collected, how many um, clicks to your website, things like that. Uh, so you want to be very specific up front and then tie it to what the actual video is doing. Um, and then think about long-term goals because a video is going to be on online for years and often has impact um, on a much longer term scale than perhaps you know a single Facebook post would have or a tweet, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I know we see common metrics uh, with videos, their views, their time viewed. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're, learn we're learning a lot about that right now. There's a very important thing that Facebook is doing right now, uh, and that is enabling us to retarget an audience that has watched our video for a specific period of time. So mm -hmm. for example, if somebody watches our video between three and 10 seconds, we can retarget them with advertising. If they watch 50% of it or 95% of it, uh, we can also set up a target and um, send advertising to those folks as well. Mm -hmm. So clearly, Facebook is figuring a lot of things out strategically. Uh, and as good marketers, we want to be able to leverage that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, thanks for everybody for watching this far. I know we want to give a takeaway. Uh, and so, Michael, with all this in mind, where do you even start? When you want to think about aligning uh, video content strategically, where do you begin? Yeah, we always start with a brief um, that outlines everything we've been talking about in as much detail as possible so that everyone involved in the creation of that video knows exactly the purpose of what they're trying to do. Uh, and we created a template of that brief that we'd like to share with everybody. Yeah, so thanks for mentioning that. The template, uh, just register for the video series. Again, room214.co slash fast forward. Um, you'll be, have access to that template uh, along with all the articles and resources uh, we'll be forwarding from that. Yeah. So um, thanks again, everybody, for joining. Just to give you a little teaser, the next episode, defining your organization's approach to creating video content. Uh, the three main things we're going to be talking about in that is uh, what makes sense to do internally versus potentially hiring an agency for. Uh, we're also looking at live events and video content relative to that. Uh, and then certainly data and analytics, which I know is a favorite yes. of yours. So again, everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, we'll see you next time. Room214.co slash fast forward. We're out. <laughs>